I live right next to a Navajo reservation and have made friends with many of the people there my age. We like to hang out, play video games, and just be normal teenagers. I walk over a lot, since my best friend lives a little less than a mile away from me. This isn't exactly a long trek, and usually only takes me about 25 minutes. I've made this trip dozens of times, and have even grown very comfortable with it. I know the people along the way, so I'm not scared or on edge. There is a patch of forest. However, about midway there, it's a little unnerving sometimes. There is always that feeling of being watched. This was a regular occurrence for me, so I try to just ignore it and shake it off as my mind just playing tricks on me. This day, I spent more time at my friend's house than I'd meant to, and when I left, it was already getting dark. I reached the stretch of forest right as the sun disappeared from the sky. I shivered a little as I readied myself to begin the journey through. I was ten steps in when I heard a branch snap. You know the sound, the one that screams that there is definitely somebody or something there with you. I froze, not sure of what I should do next. Should I run? Should I turn around and book it back to my friend's house? I don't know the best option in this situation. I whispered, Hello? Hearing my voice crack as the words fell from my lips, I don't know why I even opened my mouth, but it was out there, so I listened eagerly for a reply. My heart sank when the answer came back in the sound of my own voice. Hello? I began to breathe too fast, my heart pounding against my chest. I felt like I might faint. Hello? My voice came again, but not from my mouth. I wanted to run, my feet feeling cemented to the ground. I could not scream, and I could not reply. My voice echoed over and over from a short distance away. I could not pinpoint exactly where it was coming from. It sounded like it was everywhere around me. Hello. Hello. It had repeated. So I screamed to stop and I finally managed to tear from my lips, when everything around me grew silent. For a long minute, nothing had happened. The air was stale, and I realized then for the first time, there were no typical forest sounds. No bugs, no frogs or crickets. Nothing. So I stood there, terrified, waiting to see what would happen next. Stop it, it mimicked back, whatever it was. I'd had enough and was willing to move my heavy legs. But before I could take a step, I had heard some rustling in the bushes only 20 feet to my left. I watched in horror as a deer head with very large antlers protruded through the brush. As it came further out and stood up on twos like a man, I took off. I flew out of those woods and all the way home in record time. I said nothing to my mother when I got there. I just went up to my room, lay down, and thought about what happened. My mother came in at some point, asked me if everything was alright. I replied yes. I was just really tired. I don't know why I did not tell her. I guess I might have been afraid of how she would react. I called my friend, told him everything. He freaked out and told me that no matter what happened that night, to not reply or look out my window. This terrified me, even more so. He said to call him the next morning, and he would explain more, and that he had to speak to his grandfather as soon as possible. Well... That night, I didn't sleep. At all. 
I stayed awake, listening to every little sound the night brought. Around three in the morning, just as I was about to drift off, I noticed the air changed. The night sounds quieted. I felt my heart begin to pound, to feel uneasy. I laid there, waiting, pulling the covers up over my head, like a child, far too scared to move. It came after a long moment again. Hello, I cried, and it was all I could do. I heard my voice say hello and stop it again. It mocked what I had said in the woods. It was terrifying enough when it copied what I said. But then it did something new. It called my name. Amy. My mother's voice. Amy, Amy, come here. Hello? Stop it! My voice again. For the rest of the night, the thing outside my window called my name in my mother's voice and repeated in my voice what I said in the woods over and over. In the morning, when the sun broke through the dark, it finally ceased. I fell into a fitful sleep. I woke around noon to my friend calling to tell me that he had spoken to his grandfather and could finally explain what happened to me. He said that there was a creature they called a specific name in their native tongue, or simply a skinwalker. He explained that it was an evil witch that used dark magic to transform into an animal with the attributes it required, and that it had for whatever reason caught my scent and now knew me. I was also given a warning that since it knew me, it would always follow me, that I would always have to be careful. Last night, I heard scratching on my window and then a low hum. The creature began saying my name again, but also adding in things I hadn't said in my mother's voice. At one point, it started calling my name but drawing it out really far. It tried to get me to come outside or to open the door and let it in my house. This went on nearly all night. At this point, honestly, I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know what to do. Is it seriously going to stalk the shadows around for the rest of my life? I don't think I can take that. I'm looking for somebody, anybody that can help me. I was just talking to my boyfriend about some weird stuff I saw as a kid. He's a hardcore believer in skinwalkers and won't say it, or even let me say it, after it gets dark, in fear of attracting one. My story starts with coming back from the store with my own family. In my village, an entire new neighborhood was being built. Mind you, I live in an area that used to have a lot of forest around me, which has since now been destroyed due to development and building houses. There was a dirt gravel road in the middle of the woods from the main road that led to a shortcut right to my house. I was maybe nine or 10 at the time, and I distinctly remember sitting in the middle seat in the middle row of our family minivan. So I got a clear view of the in-between the driver's seat and passenger seat. I was talking with my younger siblings, goofing off, and I looked up to see it crouched on the road. It looked almost exactly like the picture you get when you Google the rake. It had pale gray skin, freakishly slender, and eyes like reflectors. It freaked out and screamed saying something along the lines of, what is that? Both of my parents turned around, asked what I was talking about. So I burst into tears and saw it ran under behind a tree. It was so tall. I see it peek from the tree a couple of times and explain what it looked like to my mom, all while hysterical. My mother, of course, did not believe me at all and got mad at me 
for trying to scare my siblings. Around that time, I used to watch a lot of those ghosts caught on tape type of stuff on YouTube. I'd show them to my younger siblings, which resulted in many nightmares. My dad, on the other hand, said it was probably just a deer. It looked nothing like a deer. I still remember those eyes. When we passed by the tree, I saw it run behind. Nothing was there. It was completely dark. I thought I must have imagined it, until my dad told me he saw something too when he got home. He told me that he saw something out of the corner of his eye, but did not get a good look since I began screaming and he turned around to look at me. And to this day, it still scares me, and I never walk too close to the woods at night. So, I'm going to keep the details about me brief. I am a Northeastern American from a Norwegian-German heritage family, and I am raised very spiritual and have some ghosts of my own. Yeah, I know. Laugh at that statement, but I do have photo and video evidence. Friends, family, exes, roommates, and a girlfriend that has seen and experienced them. My best friend took me to see a shame when I was a teenager after having some activity. People call the paranormal and his father's friend a shame so that I carry a lot of good energy and I attract bad energy all the time. Well, in New Orleans when I went to visit my cousins, I managed to pick up a shadow. So far things match up. Anyhow, I moved to Arizona which most people know about the Navajo and other communities. Well, this is actually the first day that I looked, so this is new. Anywho, last Sunday morning, February 21st, 2021, nearly two days ago, me and my girlfriend were in my living room playing a game. Well, we have been noticing my cat, Ebby, acting weird, staring out the back door all night, fluffing up from time to time, and just glaring at the door. Finally, 4 a.m. rolls around, and Ebby freaks out, cowered in the hallway, hissing and growling. She doesn't make any noise. She doesn't even purr unless she is with me. She only meows when I make sandwiches because she wants to eat the lunch meat. So when she freaked out like this, it shook me, and Sam were curious and freaked out. I got up to calm her down, and I heard my roommate, Andre, wake up from the noise. I took a few steps to Ebby, when Sam cried out my name. I looked over to the sliding glass door that sits right behind the couch we were on, and what I saw still has me shook to this moment. Sam was bolting past me when I saw two blood-orange eyes staring in from the glass looking right at me and Sam. Once Sam was out of the room and running down the hallway, the eyes logged on to me. Now, that is mostly all that I saw. I'm not a short or skinny man. I weigh 230, work out, and work in construction part-time for my main job. So, I'm not a small guy. But the eyes on this thing stood at least half a head taller than I maybe 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, I didn't see much of a body, and what made me run was when the eyes went down to about chest level and moved to the right. I'm a self-defense advocate as well. I have pistols, shotguns, revolvers, hunting rifles, when I go hunting, of course, and my dad's AR. I ignored all of them. Instead, I bolted for the same hallway everybody else has run into and nearly slammed into Andre, trying to figure out something, and pushed Sam into the bathroom. It has no windows, so I figured safe, and then finally went for my guns. Within seconds, Andre and I each had a gun. We called 911 and were in for the scariest seven minutes I have ever been in. 
I barely know anything about these witches, and the only reason why I call them a witch is because I don't reference anything Native American by name. I learned that lesson the hard way, and I have never researched them. But when all three of us are cowered in a half-bathroom hearing scratches, knocking, someone running on the roof, banging, and sounds that sounded like knocking on the walls, till it stopped, and we heard wailing from a siren up close. Here is when things get weird. The police, as in more than one, showed up quickly. They said when the officer came to our house, he saw a figure banging on the side of the house before taking off. So he pursued after it, only to find that it dipped down the alley right next to our house. When he pulled his suburban into the alley, he lost him. The police had us answer questions, investigate the house and such. They left around 6.30ish a.m. Sam stayed at my place, too scared to go home. Andre called out of work, and I went in later that morning. As I was working, my buddy Ray asked me what happened. I panicked inside, and was like, what? So I asked him what he meant, and he just told me that you seem messed up. I described to him what happened without naming what I know, and I saw outright. He wanted me to ride home with him. So we go home, and he asked how my herbs are growing when we were in my backyard. I just said they were ready to be picked soon. Why? Well, he didn't say anything. Just pointed at the trays that I grow my herbs in, and they're all trashed, picked clean. He only chuckled and said, You got nothing to fear. He wasn't here for you. He was here for them. One of you must have done something in the past for him to take the knee to scare you all. If we're his targets, it would have been much worse. With that, we walked the house, and he told me to smell the air. He said if I or anyone else was targeted, we would have noticed a rot and decay smell. Then, he found freshly turned soil and dug at it. We found a wad of dried corn husk near where the herbs were and said that we should leave it. Removing it is bad, but had no ill intentions. He then told me some things that I don't want to write, for the sake of rules. But tonight, I am burning some sage and cedar, and tomorrow I plant more herbs. Specifically, those that it likes, but away from the doors and windows, so we don't get scared by him 